I want to appreciate what Dr. Friedman shared with us. Uh, it's the first time I've heard that. And I wasn't ready for it. And I don't know that I'll ever be ready for it. But this is a story that is more than a story that every California student should know and that every student in the nation should know. So that when we say never forget and never again, and that we will not be bystanders, but we will be actors, that we understand that there is a direct and human context to what we talk about. It is heartbreaking to hear the story, but we must tell it again and again and again. It's also heartbreaking to hear that a majority of California students do not know that the Holocaust existed. And that cannot be, and that will not be on our watch. We will not allow that. All of us together, we will not allow that. And, uh, and so I'm grateful that we can talk about um, this important moment today. Uh, thank you, Governor. In addition to supporting um, this wonderful Museum of Tolerance for your work with the legislature and others to put $10 million in the state budget to have educational opportunities to counter hate, to counter racism. And as you heard from all of the speakers, to recognize that genocide against any group, that there is interconnectivity for many groups. We may not have walked through each other's shoes, but we can empathize and we can connect and relate to how we might all be impacted. As difficult as it was to read the letter that Hitler signed as a younger man and then later operationalized as an older man. It struck me that words, I think it was Rabbi Cooper who said it, words do matter. And when someone articulates hate, we must act on that. We must not allow that to fester even one bit. I never imagined in my lifetime that I would see people walking in the streets with KKK flags, neo-Nazi messages, saying awful things about slaves in this country. I, I, I never imagined that it would be okay for us to see that. But when you look at the data, you will see that over the course of the last few years, there have been spikes in acts of hate against the Jewish people, against African Americans, against the LGBTQ plus community, and many, many others. And so there is a deep interconnectivity that we must work on together. I'm grateful to Senator Stern for bringing forward a bill that envisioned creating uh, a, a council on, on Holocaust education and, and, and continuing to talk about genocide. I'm grateful to Nora and many of the folks at the ANCA for continually saying we must speak out against genocide in every form. I'm grateful to my colleagues who I had the chance to serve with in the legislature when we had every year celebrations to recognize survivors or family members of survivors uh, of the Holocaust and to continue to acknowledge the impacts of the Armenian genocide. As, as, we, as the speakers have been talking, I've been thinking about many people, people from my old assembly district who came forward to share their stories about their loved ones uh, from the Holocaust. I'm thinking about um, threats that have been made against many in the Armenian community, even now as we speak. I'm thinking about comments that have been made about slaves. I'm, I think about the experience as the descendant of slaves and that experience in genocide. I think about a Latin American, American soldier uh, from California who went to help end World War II, who found himself in a concentration camp. I'm trying to tie together the interconnectivity that we all experience and that we must all stand uh, together. And so I am grateful that the California Department of Education will have the opportunity to help provide these grants to school districts to counter hate and racism. They're built in large part uh, on the bill and on a program that we created uh, during the pandemic called Education to End Hate. We literally saw the spike in hate and we made a pledge that in any school where there's an anti-Semitic act, we would go and work with that school to address it and to bring educational resources. We didn't have any when we made that pledge, by the way. So thank you, legislators and governor for the 10 million because we were just, we were just cobbling together every little foundation dollar we could get and I'm grateful that we put it out in the universe and now there's $10 million to actually provide schools with resources. And so thank you to all the legislators and members of the Jewish caucus for your wonderful words. Senator Kamlager, as we're here in your district, 
uh, to my colleagues from the Bay Area, Assembly Member Sarah Cahand and Bloom, uh, who's not from the Bay Area, but we are grateful to you and Assembly Member Medina uh, and Senator Stern. Um, it's an honor. <coughs> And his district. Thank you for allowing us to your district. Um, and, and then Senator Stern, who for many years I knew as someone who thought about environmental issues and quality of life issues and was a champion. But one day we saw that he'd introduced the bill to have this conversation about addressing genocide. And it was a, a wonderful moment to work with him. And as he told us about his experiences as a student, seeing interconnectivity and addressing it was very powerful. And so I'm grateful that we've had the chance to work with the Museum of Collins. Thank you, Rabbi May and others, for all the webinars that you provided for us. And I'm grateful that we encountered uh, Senator Henry Stern, um, who brought from his own experiences as a student, organizer, to now a senator, to the author of a great bill, and one of the co-authors of this action that we're here today. Please welcome Senator Henry Stern.